coupe or convertible? It's a simple question and sometimes it's a very simple choice. I want the wind in my hair and I want to be able to smell the countryside. I want a convertible. But sometimes the choice is less clear. You could go either way. So should you or should you not buy the convertible over the coupe? And to find out, I'm driving a DS3 Cabriolet and a standard tin top DS3. And while a lot of the points I'm going to make, well, it might be about the DS3, they do apply more generally to other cabriolets and convertibles. First of all, let's start with the price. And a standard DS3 is £16,365. The DS3 Cabriolet is £19,565. Now, keen mathematicians among you would have worked out that that's just over £3,000. That's not just specific to DS3 Cabriolet. Convertibles, generally, are more expensive to buy than the hardtops. Then there's rigidity. So if you think about it, a car strength comes from the roof and from the floor. So by chopping away the roof, you're immediately throwing away some of the car's strength. Now granted, the DS3 Cabriolet does cheat a little bit because it isn't a full convertible, it's a Cabriolet. So it's just the centre part of the roof that folds away, whereas you've still got the structure up here. But for some other cars, for full convertibles, well then, they haven't got any roof at all. So they don't handle as well, they don't feel as nice to drive. Thankfully though, the DS3 Cabriolet feels pretty much identical. The steering is electric and actually a bit slow to respond, but that's the same in both the convertible and the coupe. It still absorbs bumps very well and actually it's still very comfortable. I've done more than a thousand miles in this Cabriolet and not once did I think, oh, I'd rather be in the coupe. Another issue is weight. Quite often, to keep the strength in a car, manufacturers have to put extra strength into the floor. They have thicker floors, basically, and that adds weight. Not to mention the extra weight of the roof mechanism, because all that folding metal, the electric motors, the fabric, those are heavy things. With the DS3, DS3 Cabriolet, there's not that much of a weight penalty. It's anything from between 20 and 50 kilos of extra weight, which, in the grand scheme of things, isn't too much. What about performance and economy? Well, quite often, because of that extra weight, the performance and the economy does change slightly. But again, thankfully, in the DS3 Cabriolet, it doesn't change that much. Performance, 0-62, changes by about 0.2, 0.4 seconds, anything in between. The economy changes by a maximum of four or five miles to the gallon. And the top speed doesn't drop off very much either. I think the most it drops off by is about four miles an hour. So really, you're not losing that much. As I said, I did about a thousand miles in this car, drove up to Scotland and back, and not once did I think, oh, the economy, the performance on the twisty roads. I didn't think, yeah, this is, this is noticeably worse than the tin top. It just feels pretty much identical. Boot space is also something you've got to be aware of. Quite often the folding roofs, they sit in a space at the top of the boot, so naturally your boot space is compromised. In the Cabriolet, it's less of a problem because it doesn't actually go into the boot, but what it does do is that where normally you'd have a giant opening for the boot, in the Cabriolet, you don't. It's basically a letterbox that you open and slide things in. Yeah, it's tiny, it's actually pretty hilarious. And in terms of day-to-day -day use, how you use the car every single day, that for me has been the biggest compromise. It's just a bit of a pain. Finally, visibility. Now visibility isn't something I would normally talk about in my videos, but in the case of the DS3 Cabriolet, I think it is worth mentioning. And that's because if you fold the roof halfway down, it's absolutely fine. But if you fold it all the way back, all of a sudden you lose all of your rear visibility. You can't see anything out the mirror, and if you turn around, you've just got the roof in the way, so you have to rely completely on your wing mirrors. That can be an issue if you're reversing or want to brake hard because you don't really know what's behind you. So would you be disappointed if you bought the Cabriolet? Would it just be a world of very small compromises? No, not really. Yeah, you can't see out the back properly when you fold the roof all the way down. The boot opening is annoyingly small. In lots and lots of tiny ways, the performance and the economy is off, even if you don't notice it. But on paper, that might irritate some people. 
and it costs £3,000 more. But do you get £3,000 extra out of the driving experience? Now think about it, if you bought one, over the course of its lifetime, in all of the summer and sun, would it be worth £3,000? Yeah, I think it would. Thank you.